Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Praise the Lord. There's a reason why you came, and it's not by mistake that you came. Something is going to happen in this room. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am scared that some of you are going to be carried back. I'm telling you the truth. Some of you, they are going to carry you back like they are holding dead women. Praise the Lord. But sometimes it happens when God wants to bat something in you. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you might see strange anointings in the room as we are preaching or before we start or when we start to pray. I want you to understand that God is in control and that Apostle Grace has nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. Somebody just thank God for this evening. I feel there is a new breed. The Lord... Over a few years, about three years ago, he was speaking to me about um, a certain move that is coming up in our generation, a few people that he's raising in our nation, and I believe that there is something strong that is coming forth in the women's ministry. Some of us know that we are coming from an African um, context where women are marginalized, women look like their property, women look like they'll never be anything in this world. We bless God that he's raising people. I feel there's something new for us as a generation. I feel that this meeting is going to bust many more meetings like this, uh, not only uh, here in our nation, but across the world in the name of Jesus. And God is going to use some of you right now who are listening to me in the name of Jesus Christ. There are people here who have a very strong call upon their lives, and it's about time something is defined. I feel that God is, is, is raising people they are hungry but they are women you understand and many people know ah it's the men who are doing these kinds of things but i assure you that the world is about to be surprised praise the lord jesus there is a presence there is a power that god is releasing on people and i'm prophesying right now there is, there is a power that god is raising on, on women particularly women i see counsel i see wisdom i see the prophetic I see the healing. I see great meetings. I mean, some of us ever since we were born, we've not seen women with very, very big meetings in our nation. But we're about to see it with our very own eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just raise your hands and worship God. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the
this Saturday because they want to receive something money can't buy. Father, we pray that tonight you will ignite something in the human spirit that will create a certain influence that will echo through eternity.
you Lord Jesus you may be seated thank you Lord first Samuel chapter 1 I want to some people say Hannah's cry but some people think it's about just crying <laughs> just come and get a bunch of women who are emotional and then you tell them one two three go he's alone direct translation the tears of women are near <laughs> hallelujah some people think that when you talk about Hannah's cry they think it's a place where you cry without purpose eh? praise the Lord Jesus Christ where you have changed you eh? Praise the Lord. But I want to show you exactly what was the mind of the Spirit behind this. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that as I share these words, you know the Lord has been speaking to me this whole afternoon. Somebody is going to come out of this meeting. Don't worry if you don't believe you, you'll see that person. Then you'll believe later. But somebody is going to come out of this meeting and something is going to happen to them and you're going to need to explain that actually she was a normal woman. She even used to sit there. She sat in the back, in the middle. You understand? Hallelujah. You watch this. All right, let's read. The first verse, chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, um, that now there was a certain man of read that word <laughs> it's like a drug <laughs> have you seen a dramatization is okay <laughs> there was another certain man of Ramathaim Zophim Makashatal do you swallow Ramathaim <laughs> it's not in one idea so of Mount Ephraim and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, the son of... And you look for children's names. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina, 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 whatever. And Penina had children. But Hannah had no children. Is that, is that it? Now the next verse says, And this man went up out of his city, Yali, to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in one, Shiloh. And two sons of Veli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were what? They were there. Now the Bible says, and when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, or Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. Are you with me? But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and her adversary, I wish you know what I'm going to preach. You'd be screaming. Okay, just fake a, a, an amen. Fake it. Just fake it. It will come later. And the Bible says, her adversary also what? Provoked her soul for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did, so yeah by yeah when she went up to the house of the lord so she provoked her therefore she wept and did not what and then elkanah her husband to her said hannah why weepest thou and why it is thou not and why is thine heart grieved i'm not i better to thee than ten sons and you'd love me that much the Bible says, and Hannah answered Elkanah, that I love you very much, but there is something very important to me. <laughs> Where is that verse? <laughs> the Bible says, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest 
sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And when she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so, she vowed a vow and said, O Lord God of hosts, if thou will indeed look unto the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will, bring, will give unto thine handmaid, what? A man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass that as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, and only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought that she had been drunken. Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but, that, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the Lord God Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked. And, say, and she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in early morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to the house of Ramah, Elkanah knew Hannah his wife. And the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass that when the time was about, Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called a guy Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Long story short, when the boy was weaned, like she promised the Lord, she gave him up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let me take another direction that I know many people don't preach, or probably some of you might have never heard but it's very important when you read the story of Hannah. The Bible says that her adversary laughed at her because the Lord had shut her womb. Are you with me? Now the Bible says in the book of James that God is not tempted by evil, neither tempted he any man through evil, or with evil. Are you hearing me? So he says, when trials come, eh, and then you have troubles and situations surrounding you, don't say, ah, the Lord has brought me disease to humble me. Are you hearing me? He says, let no man say, give me the message version. He says, don't let anyone under pressure give, to give in to evil say, God is trying to trip me up. God is impervious to evil and puts evil in no one's way. Give me the Amplified. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God. For God, listen, is incapable of being tempted by what is evil and he himself tempteth he no one. Now the ultimate question. Is it godly not to have children? Is it? The Bible says that none among them shall be barren. Even they are cattle. Now if you're barren, if you're in here and the doctors have told you, this, the next time your husband knows you, you better not that date down. How can he say even kato? It even makes me mad. How can he say if, even more? The thing is more. But God is saying even this one can't be. Are you with me? So the Bible says, and thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or what? Female barren among you. Or among your kato. Even your kato. God even cares for you more. He, it's there. He doesn't speak tongues. But brother, he, he said, he, listen, he said that none shall be. Not even your cattle. It might not be born again. It might not speak in tongues. It might not even know the way of the Lord. But he said that not even you shall be what? Shall be barren. 
Man, that is a very strong statement. That's a very strong statement. I told people one day, a woman came, she had been barren for eight years. And then she came and told me, Apostle, there is no man of God I have not gone to. I told her, what do you mean? I mean I've gone to every man of God. How long have you been, been barren? Eight years. Are you hearing me? I asked her, so you've also come to me to check eh? <laughs> whether even meat will work. I told her, I'm not going to pray for you if you've come to check. She said, no, okay, I've not come to check, but oh, what have I come for? Praise the Lord. <laughs> then that scripture pops into my spirit. Eh? When I remembered Kato, I told her, go and produce. Amen. So now let's pray. I told her, you don't understand. <laughs> You know, there's a point where the word of God gets so deep into your spirit that you don't even need to pray. You just need to decree a thing, the Bible says, and that thing shall be established. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, there are people whose wombs are shut by the devil. You understand? The devil shuts the womb. Are you hearing? And the person's womb is shut because of? The devil. But wake up, you woman. The Bible here says that the Lord himself shut her womb. And the God who shut that womb tempteth no man with evil. Neither is he tempted with evil. That means that Hannah, among many women I've read in the Bible, the uniqueness of her story is her barrenness was on purpose. It wasn't a coincidence of the, of, the, of the workings of the devil to come and make her barren. No. Her barrenness was on purpose. What held her up not to produce was on purpose. Now see how the devil starts to laugh on you. Because they are seeing that certain things are not working. Yet the Bible says it's on purpose. And that's the one thing I fail to understand about the devil. Are you hearing me? Because he doesn't understand God. There are certain things that can happen for you. And the devil doesn't even have a clue that everything works together for good to them that and are called according to his purposes. Are you hearing me? Everything works together for good. Everything works together for good. Now, I want to talk about a woman whose womb was shut by purpose. It's not that the devil was in this thing, that she needed to go to, to break certain demons of her family, that she, or she did this, there are those ones, but I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about someone whose womb was shut by purpose. By the end of this sermon, you'll actually realize it's more than just a womb. The Bible says that the things that were written are for, were for written for your learning, that through comfort and patience of the scriptures, the Bible says, thou might obtain what? Hope. Hallelujah. There is a certain hope that must be in your spirit. But that hope can only come by comfort and patience of the scriptures. And the patience and comfort that come by reason of revelation, not by the indifference that doesn't even know what it means. You know there are some people who are patiently waiting on the Lord, but the patience they carry is ignorance. Are you hearing me? They are waiting on the Lord for a breakthrough. They are waiting on the Lord for marriage. They are waiting on the Lord for a business plan. They are waiting on the Lord for a certain increase in their career. But you see, the, the line of their waiting on the Lord is not a place that is of the land spirit. It's not the land spirit patient before God. Are you hearing me? It's not the land spirit comfortable before God. It's an ignorant, indifferent person comfortable before God. Are you with me? And at the end of the day, you realize that person can be that comfortable and they die like that. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. See, every child of God requires a certain diligence in the things of the Spirit. Because the more you are exposed to the diligence of the Spirit, it's the more your prudence is defined. And the Bible says that the, way of, uh, that the wisdom of the prudent man or woman is to know the way of the Lord. The way God, not the ways. Uh, there's a difference between ways and way. Ways is the many things God does. Way is the way he does those many things. Certain people know the ways of the Lord, but they do not know the way. 
of the Lord. Okay, these are his ways, he's a healer, but how does he heal? These are his ways, he makes comfort, how does he give comfort? These are his ways, he ministers to the lowly, but how does he do that? Because if we are the place where we must have a certain ministration to the lives of men, we must go past the understanding of the ways and forms of the lives of men to the place where we know the way of the Spirit. That is why the Bible tells us he gives, he gets some apostles, apostles, pastors, evangelists, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. We cannot seek a place of perfecting you for the work of ministry if we've not introduced to you the way of the Lord. Are you with me? So, I want to take time just to open your spirit to something about this woman, and I believe something is going to happen here in this room today. Now, the Bible tells us that her, she, the Lord shut her womb. Ultimately, I would ask the question, why did he? If he tempted no man with evil, neither is he tempted by evil, and it's evil for a woman to be barren, because he said none shall be barren. He, it's blessing to have children. The Bible says you shall be produce and multiply, you sub, sub, subdue the earth. It's a blessing of the Lord to produce. Are you hearing me? So that means every child of God has the grace to produce results. Now ultimately, why is it that I'm not producing results in any area? I'm not talking about children now. I'm talking about job. I'm talking about ministry. I'm talking about anything, career, marriage, anything. You put anything you mention. Education, mention. Are you with me? Are you with me? God does not tempt, neither tempt us any man by evil. So this womb could not have been shut with evil intent. And that's why I realize that the devil can only scorn at what he didn't shut. If he shut it, he has no business to scorn at it. Because he knows even if he dies in scorn, you recognize his power. Are you hearing me? The same things that come in our lives, and I'm going to understand now, woman of God, that if, if, if the devil was responsible for certain things, he would not have gone ahead to push certain things further. No, he was taking advantage of what God shut. So there are people who live in a dispensation where it's God literally who shut. But they're taking, the devil takes advantage and laughs around and starts calling. The Bible says that the other woman started to laugh at her. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says she becomes lost. She starts to feel a certain pain in her spirit because she can't produce certain results anymore. And she's, she's, she's mad. You understand? At what is in her. Now, you can only understand why God shut the womb of Hannah if you understand what was in Hannah. If you don't understand what was in that woman, you can never make sense of why God shut it. Firstly, what was on Hannah, no devil could shut. Try to understand this. Try to understand. What was in Hannah, no devil could shut. Unless you don't understand who Samuel was. Listen, there was a Nazarite in that woman. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? There was a Nazarite in what? In that woman. Whether you want it or not. But you see, God needed to take this woman to a certain place of knowledge. You see, the problem with Hannah was a certain... God could not expect a woman carrying that kind of anointing to be indifferent to a certain level of knowledge. That is why the Bible says that in your day, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time and it shall be the strength of your salvation. There are certain things, if you don't know them, it's not right for you to have certain things. They are inside you, but they cannot come out if you don't have the, the certain knowledge in you. It's like the anointing. It's like the anointing. Listen, do you know how many people die because of the anointing? Not because the anointing is bad, because they don't have enough stability in their spirits. To hold that anointing. Peter speaks of men which are unlearned and unstable. And the Bible says, and they twist the scriptures like they do other scriptures for their own destruction. You get the point where somebody is destroyed because they twisted the scriptures. They, they died in the book. They died in the book. The Bible says, and some per, per, pertaining the Holy Communion, the Bible says, some partake it in an unholy manner, an unworthy manner, the Bible says. 
and they bring damnation to their own self. And the Bible says, and some for that reason fall and are sick and are dying. Why? Because they protect the Lord's cup with an indifference. Look at how death can spring out of what ought to give life. Are you with me? It's like, you see, many of you have never made lemon walk. Many of you. I'm not saying all of you. Okay? But when you get that knowledge, are you hearing me? And a bone gets in order when you're seeing. Your life can never be the same again. Because what puts that bone together can put a marriage back, can open a blind eye, can open a deaf ear, can make a dumb man speak, can raise a dead man. Your life can never be the same again. You see, Muslims have money. You understand? But there's a reason why they can't do healing miracles, healing meetings. Because this, there's a difference between money. Let's, let's first separate this. There's a difference between having money and having an anointing on you. That is why when Paul is dealing with knowledge, he gets the ultimate battle every person who deals with knowledge has. He says, and to keep me from getting puffed up, because of the abundance of the revelations that came to my spirit, the Lord sent forth a messenger to buffet me. Are you hearing me? The buffeting on his spirit is not just out of a guy who knows nothing. No, he's dealing with a guy who knows too much. That he needs to make the guy feel, hey, boss, you're, you're too anointed, but please, remember you're human. Yeah. Are you with me? But you see, when the Bible says in the book of Psalms that before I was afflicted, I went astray, then it has to be true in every circle that God could not have afflicted a man with the abundance of revelation if there was not place of going astray, even in the knowledge. Sure. Now we realize it later in his level of maturity when he says, ah, Knowledge pops up, but love edifies. He realizes later that he received an abundance of revelation in his spirit, that he became a proud guy. You see how he begins. And if I look at myself, I see that no apostle weighs against me, for I'm greater than the greatest apostles. But later he realizes he's less of the apostles, and then least of the saints, and then a sinner in Timothy. But you see, there was a point where Paul was unteachable. He knew, he knew. He thought, and there are people like that, by the way. There are people in this world like that. And you see, the Lord told me something a few months ago and told me, some of you are going to be fought at your workplaces, in your personal ministries, in your families. You understand? Because there is one thing I have realized and has come to pass over the years. When we're talking about teaching, eh? okay, what is predictable is in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem has had a course over the years that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If a priest, a Pharisee, a Sadducee, an Ethan, go to cultures and study it, that is it is done. There is a level of knowledge where even men reach to doctorate. That is why the Bible defines Gamaliel as the doctor of the law. Are you with me? It defines Gamaliel as the doctor of the law. That means there was a doctorate. There was probably a degree, diploma, certificate, and what? Anything predictable can only be at a place where a man gets to the cup, as in a man gets to the highest level he can get to. And that was the trouble in Jerusalem. That if you're looking for somebody to teach Paul, the Bible tells us he leaves us at Cilicia, and then he goes to sit under one Gamaliel. The Bible says, which was a doctor of the law. And he had much honor and respect amongst many. Are you with me? So, this, this Gamaliel, when you go to the center of Jerusalem, if they're teaching the Torah, there are five books. There are no more than five books. 
a man can have a very intricate study of the Torah until he's done with knowledge. To a point where he knows it. In fact, Paul says that I, 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 I he, he says, I got so experienced in the profession or the knowledge of the Judistic or the Jewish knowledge. He says that I even went ahead of my own peers. Are you hearing me? So the Bible tells you that when he goes ahead of his own peers, the Bible says, for that reason, he persecuted the church and wasted it. Why? Because the more he launched in, the Bible says, the more he became zealous. He says, for you have heard of my past conversation in past time in the Jews' religion. Give me the Amplified. It defines the Judistic line. Uh -huh. For you have heard of my earlier career, former man of life in the Jewish religion, Judaism, how I persecuted and abused the church of God furiously and extensively and with fanatical zeal did my best to make havoc of it and destroy it. Why? Because Paul knew too much. Paul knew too much. Too much in the Jewish culture. But he excelled above his peers. Are you hearing? He excelled above his peers. Now, you're dealing with Jerusalem, and that is why Christians, you must study this. Don't worry, it's a women's conference. I know where I'm going. You must study this. There's a reason why the Bible defines something called New Jerusalem. Because the old Jerusalem has to die. The predictable kind of church has to die if you must produce what is unpredictable. Do you know that the church in Jerusalem literally died before and the Gentile church thrived? Now the Gentile church across the world is trying to reach Jerusalem. Today now if you go in the major temple of Ju Jerusalem, Judaism is there. Seventh Creed, Moses, best prophet, whatever they ever lived shall live and will ever live. They don't know that Jesus walked in the flesh. Right now, in Jerusalem, Judaism has a root. Are you with me? Judaism has a root. Very deep. The church in the book of Acts began in Jerusalem. They left to Damascus. Persecution arose. Some were scattered across by reason of the gospel. And the men, like Paul and Barnabas, with a different message, were given the grace they went out in those places, preached the message. But you realize, Paul tells you that this gospel, this is the problem. Even when people have issues with you, you woman, you see, some of you are going to get to a point where people are not fighting you because you are funny. No. But because what is in you was not given by man. Hannah. And so I named him Samuel because... The Lord gave him to me. Are you with me? I asked him of the Lord. He's God given. Because there's enough predictability of anything handed over down to men. That is why now Paul tells you something like that for no man told me this gospel. And neither went I to Jerusalem to them which were of reputation. But when the Lord saw it fit to separate me, Paul says, he took me to the places of Arabia. You see, that, you see, now Hannah, you must understand why there has to be a separation between Elkanah. And that is why Elkanah tells you, I am tied better to you than ten sons, ten representing the law. Taught in Jerusalem. Do you get it? So he, he says, I am tied better than ten men. Because he's not talking about sons. Are you hearing me? He's talking about ten, the number representing. Then you see how this woman separates herself from the camp. Are you hearing me? Elkanah can't pray for you. You see, some women, some, some women, the reason why certain things have failed to, to happen in your life, you still think that your husbands have answers. Bigger than God. Remember Rachel to Jacob. This woman is barren. She knows the guy functions very well. He did it to lay and she produced. And then she goes to Jacob and tells him, give me children or I die. Give you, give. The guy asks her, am I God? He asks her, am I God? Am I? Listen, women, I know you're married. I hear some of you are married. Oh, you're going to get married. But never put your husband above God. I said, never put your husband above God. 
let me say the third time, never put your husband above God. If Elkanah had power, he would have given that woman a child long ago. But there is a power. You see people say, men have power. The power of a man. Direct translation. But there was something Elkanah couldn't put in her. You didn't understand me. It doesn't matter how sperm entered. Are you hearing me? There was something Elkanah couldn't put into this woman. So he says, I went to Arabia. And after that came to Damascus three days. And then went to Jerusalem to submit what the Lord had taught me. And that is the problem. When you receive something that is not coming from any man. Get ready. Get ready. I say it as a man of God. Get ready. When you start to receive things that your husband can't give you, when you start to receive things that no, your job can't give you, that no man can claim that I put this on her. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'll get to know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go deeper now. Now, it's the same thing with Jesus and the disciples. These guys come in consonance of prayer and fellowship. He tells them, I give you power to trample on snakes and scorpions. And none of those things shall in any means harm you. He's given them power. He starts to teach. They are there. He demonstrates. They are there. He makes lame men walk. They are there. He casts out devils and raises the dead. He shines on the mountain. They are there. Then a karabiko guy comes from somewhere. And he starts casting out devils. Put your name. Now, the Bible says, the disciples, they came and said, Master, we found a certain marabaka sheketele parando, casting out devils in your name. And we forbade him. Luke says, because he doesn't follow with us. Mark says, because he doesn't follow us. That means, when they were in the camps of the twelve, they never used to see the guy there. Then they start to ask themselves that question. That is what's going to happen to some of you. You're going to start moving in something. And they'll say, this is not this church. This is not this ministry. It couldn't have come from Makata Yaba. Give me volume. I feel I'm shouting a lot. Now here is the problem. They forbid. They start to fight the guy. Why? Because this is their problem. If it came from Gamaliel, you will be comfortable. You see, God told me, and I'm telling you this as a man of God, somebody is going to walk out of this room with something no man can give you. Even me, I'm just preaching, but I can't give it to you. So the guy says, Master, we saw one casting out devils in my name, and I forbid him because he followeth not with us. Mark says, he followeth not us. You see how two guys think? The other one says, Luke is questioning the guy's roots. Mark is questioning the guy's presence. And the Lord told me, he's raising certain women here. Now they can't explain where you got it from. They, they see it's in you. They can smell it is in you. But they can't explain where you got it from. Stop having explainable children. The Bible says that I and my children, the Lord has given me, they shall be for signs. They are not signs. They are for signs and wonders. They shall be potents in Israel. Tell your neighbor, stop having predictable babies. Stop having predictable marriages. Stop having predictable businesses. Stop having predictable uh, careers. Stop having predictable hair, predictable bags, predictable cars, predictable dresses, predictable rent, predictable... Get to a level where people will start speculating what they don't know. What is the word that you to
Listen, Penina. Don't laugh at a woman whose womb got shut. Because if your substance was unpredictable, yours would have been shut too. You don't understand what I'm saying. Penina, don't laugh at a woman whose womb God shut. Because if your child was unpredictable. Yours could have been shut too. Some people celebrate having what is predictable. Now I think you understand why you came for Hannah's cry. It can't be for Penina. See, it can't be for Penina. Are you hearing me? Do you think you just came? No. There's a reason why through rain, blistering heat and cold, you came. Something must happen in your life. And I add, something that no man can give you. I'm not talking of something somebody can look at and say, ah, ah, oh, you're here. No, no, no. Listen. If... <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could. You see... That's when we realized that Paul had an issue. He was puffed up. Are you hearing me? And then God put a... Because God needed to teach Paul a certain love that exceeds the abundance of revelation. The simplicity of things that teach him to become all things to all men that he might serve some, to the proud, to the weak as a weak, to them which are under the law as one which is under the law. And he becomes all things that he might serve some. And the next thing we know, his ministry blows up. That is why when God tells him, take it away, he just needs the grace to sustain him. But the grace to sustain him is just incubation period to produce the character of a man who must exceed in knowledge. This was abundance of revelation. But there's a place in God where the unity of the faith that separates you from you thinking that you're the best of all the apostles. That's why I say it. That's the problem with many people regarding you. You're casting out devils soon, but you won't have followed with them. Tuali tukolango wali waka weba se. Sente wazi jawa. Tuali tuli self-help program. Ezo kutu ya mboku fukaba chala. Gwete wali uo. Na ewa tusoka okufumbirwa omu saja wa mu jawa. Tuakula interview. Tuali na merit. Ela. Tuali bagezi. Tuaku singa ne class omulimu ba kukua batia the rest is not to the swift neither battle to the strong neither bread to the wise nor yet riches to the men of understanding tell your neighbor in Luganda where to get this is your season you know Man, I'm preaching to women, but even me, I'm receiving it now. <laughs> You're going to move in something. No way, you woman. No way. No way. No way. No way. Came from somewhere. Hallelujah. Arabia. Hallelujah. Arabia. Hallelujah. Arabia. Where there is no Sadducee and Pharisee. Do you know that the next move you're going to see in the church has not been there before. You wait, you wait, the way women are going to come up soon. Some are not even in this room. You wait. Some people say, hey, this is movement. You see, Christ is a revival, revival meeting. And then you go there and then you say, never name no revival. <laughs> is this revival? Maria Ulwas Eta stands on a pulpit and raises our hands and the power of God slains people 10 kilometers away and you tell me revival meeting which can't even check the security guard I'm not talking about that I'm talking about something and when you have it 
they are going to ask you, where did you get it? Because they don't see it on any woman. 10 kilometers. They started to carry dead bodies. Like they were slain. And he started to bring them. What happened? This one was walking and the power of God hit them. How many kilometers? Five kilometers away. What's his name? Mohammed. <laughs> Why? That woman had something in her that no man could ever have given. That, that, man, you're about to give birth. Just give me a few minutes. Teresa, you put in order everything necessary. That is why when, when Hannah starts to sing after the miracle in Samuel 2, she, she speaks in verse 3 and then she starts to correct ignorant Penina. She tells Penina, talk more, no more, exceedingly, proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge. You are laughing that I'm not giving birth, but the God of knowledge shut my womb because there was a certain knowledge he was putting in me because he knew I needed that kind of knowledge to deliver a judge and a prophet who will pour an anointing on the first king of Israel, on the second king of Israel, and judge Israel. But you see, Penina has a problem. She's laughing because she doesn't know. So the proud talk exceeding is out of an ignorant woman. Some of you know the reason why certain things in your life delayed and people laughed. They laughed. That's all you. God knew that it had to come at a particular point. When you know enough to keep that boy. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Any woman here knows you can't stop winning your child and give him to another man. Except if a certain character has been bred in you. But I have a problem as Jehovah God if I should open the womb of a woman who will refuse to let go of a boy who is purpose. So there's a certain thing I must put in her that by the time the boy is born, she sees more than one boy. That's why in that song she says, the barren woman has given birth to seven. <laughs> Has given, not will give. You don't get it. She says that the barren woman has given birth to seven. She doesn't say will give birth. Uh -uh. Has given birth to seven. And the number seven represents perfection. She produced what is perfect. She produced what is perfect. In her life, you realize that she gave birth to a total of six kids. So she was not talking about seven children. She was talking about the child that is perfect. In fact, if you read the Hebrew, let me make you run crazy. The word Elkanah means the Lord has purchased or has acquired. And the name Hannah means a favored one. So, the Lord has purchased a favored one to give a man child to. A perfect man to. The Lord has purchased a favored one to give the perfect man to. So, what you think is actually sat womb, it's actually favor. So to take a what, what you think is a shackle, let me tell you, that's why I said, some of you delay and people think, let me tell you, when I just started ministry, the Lord told me, close all your churches, oh you leave pastors there, I went and left those pastors, and the Lord told me, go and sit under a man of God for 10 years, I went and sat under him for 10 years, and I had people who were my peers, they all went and started ministry, you understand, and then some guy called me and told me, man, you know why, is the gift on you? It can't stay under a man of God like that. You're supposed to bask out quicker. I told the guy, you don't understand. 
the first meeting I had in La Bonita sat 1,200. What are you talking about? <laughs> 10 years of serving one man, and in one day it's 1,200. In one year, November, the celebrations in August, we gathered a total of more than 10,000 people. Now every Thursday we're sitting to the tune of 3,000 people. In 12 months, watch what's coming. <laughs> now, it's not only happening in my life, you woman. I'm saying that is the thing that is going to happen in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes people don't understand why certain things delay. But when it comes out, even those who have been there for 30 years, they will say, no, this is another thing. <laughs> no man gave it. He didn't get it from Jerusalem. <laughs> it was Arabia. Over who am I talking to? God has possessed. He has both purchased a seven one. One who is severed. Are you with me? So, by the time Samuel comes out, we actually understand what was in Hannah was more than a child. It was ministry. Amen. Judge, prophet of Israel. But Hannah doesn't. You see, she... That is why when Elkanah tells her, I am tied better than ten sons, he doesn't understand that this is not about physical children. There's something inside this system. When I was growing up as a woman, I might have not told you, but inside there, there are certain things I used to feel. When you're carrying a judge in your spirit, when you're carrying a prophet in your spirit, when you're carrying the Savior of Israel, there are certain things in your life that start to make you feel different. Do you understand? When you're carrying a child that is supposed to be, this is my biological mother, she can tell you. She told me when she was pregnant of me. She just used to sing the whole day. Amazing grace. How sweet that sound. Let's stand and dance another business. Two minutes later. Amen. Yeah, God, why is this song coming to me? Call him, Christ. Boy, oh God, call him. Boy, oh God, call him, Christ. Why? She wasn't just singing a song. There was something inside her telling her, Grace. Grace, you had this woman of God. So her she's there. She has her issues. But there's a the thing inside telling jo Jonathan. Jonathan. Something must happen to you today. Now, that boy can't be no more. Even if he wants. He, listen, even if that boy wants, that boy can't be no more. Because you felt him before he came out. Obama was into Chowrianga to China Furuma. So, lovely Elkana, they're eating food. She becomes sad. I better than 10 kids. You don't get it. This is. I'm not trying to get back to Penina. I have knowledge. And the Bible says in that same song the Lord weighs action. I'm not trying. If, if, if that woman went into labor to, to disprove Penina, she would have lost somehow. This is not a game of trying to revenge eh? on who oh, you did this to me, therefore even... No, 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 no. This is not even me having children because I must have. I would have been fine not having. But there's a guy inside there. Every time I sleep, he's inside like this. He wants to prophesy. Are you hearing me? There's a guy inside there. Every time I'm there, I feel like he's a judge. I don't know what is inside me. But some, that's why some people won't be able to explain. There are people here who are normal. But you're about to become abnormal. I you Abakazi. Let me even say it in Uganda. Mwata Abakazi. If, listen, if you don't have that 
instinct. You will kill the cause of divine purpose for nations. He finds a woman and tells her, in you two nations, well, imagine, you have the ability. I wish as a woman, you have the ability to carry nations. Nations. Do men do that? No. He told her, in you two nations, God defined nations inside her. He didn't define it in the husband. Uh -uh. From husband it was seed, sperm. Now when it entered woman, poor God said, ah, now that's a nation. May you, my women. <laughs> you literally hold heaven like this. How can you marry? My man. Ah, can't square me because it's way. Tosovola. You can't raise two nations and one guy fails you. I'm sorry. Husbands, I'm sorry. You are not supposed to be here. How? But you see, every woman requires a certain line of instinct. Because woman represents such instinct. Rebecca. God says, the woman eh, who shall fetch water for me and my can the candles of my master, that shall be the wife of my master Isaac. It's not the fetching of water that makes her the wife. It's that network that connects with the angel of Abraham whom he sent before. The Bible says when he was talking to his servant, he says, I have sent the angel of my Lord ahead of you to get my boy Isaac a wife. Angel goes roaming, waiting for divine instruction. What is the instruction? What is the condition? This servant is going to make. If this servant said that I want the wife of my master to come on this well and just start dancing. What's the thing? Now we are talking about that kind of network. Where are you? You get to the well, you look stupid and then you start to tell your dear neighbor you better have that instinct woman. If you had said that the wife of my master, when she comes to this well, she's going to start screaming. You just see a woman at the well, she reaches down and she starts. Woo! Rebecca was not looking for a man. She just had a network. Now I believe, he says, I need water. The angel tells the woman, Fetch it. Because the network is there. The Bible says she doesn't fetch only water for the servant, but for the camera. And then they take her. Then they want to take it. They are seeing the Mukwa and Yamusaja. They are seeing the Mukwa in a network. Do not take it. When Katunabaka Queen Ake is wrong, the water got to Kai that. Not MTN, not Smile Telecom, all of those oranges, they, they, they disappoint, mangoes, died. Listen, it's Ripos, Kerry, Pandara, Kasa. Listen, I, see, God needs to do a certain ministry. But you see, when the angelics are sent, a certain woman better have... Before you know it, she's fetching water. Are you hearing me? She's saying, oh, am I fetching water? Oh, am I singing in choir every day? Oh, am I attending meetings every Thursday? Oh, why am I reaching out? We think people, Kumbi. Because 
if Isaac has to determine the next course, he needs one whose candle burneth out not in the darkness. Proverbs 31. Because Jehovah God knows this man will run blind one day. And he's blind on purpose. Because if he sees, Esau will take the blessing. He's, yet he's not God's choice. And the Bible says in Proverbs, and her candle goes not out by night. So when the guy's eyes are closed for her, not only physical. <laughs> Let me tell you, there was a difference between Jacob and Isaac. The way God dealt with Jacob was different from the way God dealt with Isaac. That is why both of them are blind men, but one can know the difference. In, in that story, the one without network is Joseph. Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? But Jacob has network. Dad, you put the wrong hand on the first son, my son. He said, I know. He didn't say, are you sure? Have I made a mistake? No. He says, my son, I might not be seeing, but I know. Now, he realizes if he should raise Isaac, he's going to put that antenna on a certain woman. Do you understand me? And that woman better have it because that very antenna that fetches water for camels will come when it's dark for him to see. And she will pick vibes. That antenna will make her walk next to the room at the point when Esau is receiving instruction. It, it can't find her in the kitchen. It, it, can't, it, can't, it can't find her in the kitchen. It can't find her in a garden. It, man, you tell your dear woman, that neighbor, and tell her, Gwe, she called her Mugambe. Mugandi ko network, Mugambe. Listen, that network. Kitchen. She's cooking. Rima Zeketele tells her, stand up. Stand up. Walk. She walks. Go to the bed like this. Stand on the door. Don't breathe too much. Listen. Please. And so, go get me made. Make it the way I want it. You, you know. Why? Because the Bible says, <laughs> his brother was a tent dweller. <laughs> this one is a skillful hunter. Hunting with together. I'm talking about something that you don't deserve. <laughs> and the Bible says, Jacob was lazy. Theater of Fuba Tasca. Are you hearing me? Waka Hadi. You don't understand. I'm talking about something you can't get because you're a hard worker. I'm talking about you can get something when you're a hard worker. But I'm talking about something that you cannot get because you're a hard worker. And you pray a lot. Tell your neighbor, Hannahs are going to pray to them. Mugambe, Mugambe, Hannahs are going to pray to them. Listen, see, the Bible says, Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was playing. <laughs> Dwelling in tents. Are you telling us, you're telling people not to work hard? No, I'm telling you, there is stuff 
that you can't work hard for. It can only come in such conferences. Even me, I'm going to pray. I feel something has to come out of my spirit. Go get me again. Cook that thing the way I know how. Big mistake. Network was there. And network knows how to make a soul meet. No, we don't take it. Eso. Eso. He's in trouble. Because network, one time network was doing her own things. And the spirit told her, learn how Eso makes meat. You learn. Now here, why should I learn from a boy who, who I must teach? I don't get it. There is a certain way he makes it. The father didn't say, make it the way your mother makes it. Uh -uh. It means she taught him how to make meat. Then he improved his cooking. And then one time network dr was driven to her recipe, to his recipe. And then she observed, okay, he puts in a bit more um, cucumber than this, okay. He garnishes like this and puts it on him. Okay. Why have you told me? What is this? Knowledge. Penina, 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 knowledge. Are you hearing me? So the guy goes, whoosh, network switches on Z. Going, when I was pregnant of you, inside, the Lord said that the older shall serve the younger. But I needed network to hear it. Because I would have killed the whole history of Israel. But network was there. I had. Same network taught me how he cooks. Same network has wired me to sit and hear the guy giving instruction. Same network is going to kill God. Same network. Same network knows that if the husband discovers that the belly light to the sun, he will be cast. Same network is ready to bear a curse because network carries a certain faith that it can't happen. But she needs to minister comfort to the network list. Tent dwell. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And the next thing we know, the blessing switches. Rebecca finishes her ministry. You need a certain network. I said you need a certain network. It's the same thing. This woman loved her husband very well and much. But you see at this particular point, when you start to tell me you're better than ten boys, network inside tells me this is not about boys. Inside there, there is a judge and a prophet for Israel. That is the guy God has to use to pour the anointing on Saul and David, a man after God's own heart. I need that network later, because when it meets David, it must hear that he's the one. I don't know who I'm talking to. So God shuts womb to give her knowledge. She receives knowledge. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now, that's why when she went to God to pray, the priest did not see her need. He saw the finished work. He said, you go. Your petitions have been heard. Why? Because he also has network. He knows who is denied. I won't take it. I won't take it. Next thing we know, the God which passes, purchases and possesses the favored one has to work in her life a line of perfection to deliver the judge and the prophet. Are you hearing? Now some of you, God has been teaching you certain things. Nenga, you don't know what is happening. No. This knowledge is coming to you. Because for so long we've had penniners in Uganda. We've had penniners, people who just produce things that are predictable, 
things that can be seen, things that can be explained. Now even now there is something that is going to fall in this room. That is going to make you produce something that nobody can predict. Some of you the coming few months and weeks and years. Thus saith the Lord. You are going to move in things no man can give you, no man can explain, no man can interpret, no man can try to fabricate, and nobody can fake. Are you hearing me? That's when I realized Hannah's cry was not a cry of a barren woman. Hannah's cry was a cry of a woman who was asking for a certain knowledge to give a child. You didn't get it. She needed a certain knowledge to give her what the Lord shut her. So that by the time it's out or it's conceived, she carries the knowledge of how to raise it, how to win it, and how to release it. Now, that is what has happened this evening. Whether you want it or not, there's, I saw there's something that I saw heaven send, and I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, I give them knowledge to open their wombs. I give them knowledge to walk in the prophetic anointing. I give them knowledge to walk in the healing grace. I give them knowledge to walk in the evangelistic arm. I give them knowledge to walk in counsel. I give them knowledge to build nations. I give them knowledge to raise governments. I give them knowledge to raise ministries. Now, if the spirit has started to move before I start to stop to preach, that honestly means we have to pray. Somebody just raise your voice. Get to your feet and start to speak in other tongues. I feel I need to prophesy in a few individuals. I want you to raise your voice and pray like a woman who is tired of where you are. I want you to open your voice and pray like a woman with knowledge of where you're supposed to go. I want you to open your voice and pray like somebody who is about to knock heads with purpose. If you are buried by purpose, you're going to give back by purpose. Come on, you're not praying. You're not praying. My word is there. My I Oh God, how I need you. Somebody raise your voice and pray. I need some women who can pray. I really need some women who can pray. Oh, We're returning to the king's presence. Lord, I need you.
Come by the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, I need you. Oh. women here who are ready to conceive child. Listen, our nation has seen prophets, but I'm seeing certain prophets here. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, where are they God? 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 We oh, can't help that woman. 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 The one in green. Oh, God. There are certain prophetic voices in our nation. There are certain prophetic voices. 
in our generation, Holy Spirit, wherever they are, get them out. Wherever they are, 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 God is about to do something. I need an answer here. God is about to do something in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life. People are going to look at you and know there is something different. There is something different. Asha. anointed to heal the sick. I see hands. Huh? And there's somebody of the same anointing. You feel like there's a fire in your belly. I see healing in some people's hands. God, whether cancers, HIV, the cripple, the deaf, the blind, in the name of Jesus, receive it, receive it. I see a fire that heals the sick. Oh, yeah. I want to here there are women here God is going to give you money I'm not talking about just don't refuse listen God is going to give you money to build a kingdom you're going to intimidate some men in our nation God is going to make you so rich as of glory people thought only men have Right now in the name of Jesus. Power the Holy Ghost! Lord, I need you. Sometimes money is an anointing. Hey. You're going to build a kingdom. You're going to have a lot of power and authority. Yours as well. Receive it. Yes, yes. Now, if there's any woman who is barren in this room right now, I release the anointing, physical barren. There's a young girl you have not even yet gotten married. She's somewhere there. She's not even yet married, but she has a barren spirit. You spirit, right now, I command you to lose. I've seen her. I've seen a barren spirit somewhere here. Even yet married.
God says, I open your eyes. That says the Lord. The Spirit. You're going to see things that will even scare you. But they are of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I decree and I declare upon your life that a new ministry is coming out of you. A ministry that no man can give you. Things that no man could ever teach you. God is going to teach you His way. I see some of you even living in this country. I see an anointing that is taking some of you out of this country. And you're going to move nation to nation, nation upon nation, upon nation. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive it right now. Yes, you. In the name of Jesus. Nation upon nation. For the glory of God, I see counsel on you. I see a wisdom on your life that is going to show answers for government in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going out of this room with something you have not seen in Uganda, with something you have not, not seen in Africa, with something you have not seen in any continent of the world. For what eye has not seen, what ear has not had, what has not entered the hearts of man, he has prepared for them that love him. I need to pray for you, woman of God. Come. 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 What eye has not seen? What ear has not had? What has not entered the hearts of men? God anoints you. Then. God gives you a voice among voices. God gives you a wife among wives. God raises you. Your child will be blessed. Very blessed of the Lord. Very anointed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I walk out with something that money can buy. Say in the name of Jesus. I walk out with a certain instinct that no normal man can have. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm shaking my country. I'm shaking this continent. I'm shaking this village. I'm shaking Africa. I'm shaking the world. I'm influencing everywhere I go. In the name of Jesus. For God had my prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Take a minute and just pray for sick people. If you're sick, hold where it's paining. I don't care whether it's a swelling, gross, abnormal, silly thing. Just hold where it's going. Right now, in this anointing, I see somebody. My brains are just being cut out. And you're going to go back and shake yourself. And they're not going to find size. I see growth in your armpit. I see growth in breast disappearing right now. If you're sick, receive your healing right now. HIV is going right now, right now, right now. Receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at Kampala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.